We're not politically correct, we just have common sense. Unscripted, unfiltered, unfaltering. Show of Supports Hunt for Heroes offers tributes and true stories of remarkable courage. That these terrorists could come in your bedroom and kill you, your wife, and your kids. And that's what these men are fighting to protect us from, these, these murdering idiots. And uh, they're taking them out so that we don't have to deal with them over here. Show of Support started it all just after the shock and awe bound the nation together. Now, years of footage portraying wounded veterans, deer stands, and standing ovations. Hunt for heroes that started as one man's way to say thanks is now a series that many say is way overdue. This is something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It's just a raw emotion. It's been like a dream. It really has. We still have 40,000 injured troops. It's going to take a while to get around to all of them, but there's no quitting. It'll never stop as long as I'm breathing. I think uh, people aren't getting uh, the big picture. It's that, that area of the world is a huge threat to us, and not only from them, but from our further enemies, you know, that do not like democracy. I think we do great things. My job on this uh, last deployment was um, explosive ordnance disposal, so our job was to render safe or just get rid of IEDs caches, weapons, anything like that. It's pretty much, yeah, we just pretty much in charge of uh, getting rid of IEDs, a lot of IEDs, and along with that, you know, we're also expected to just be just like a regular Marine and just engage a weapon, engage the enemy, so kind of have to do a little bit of everything out there. Ever since he received his globe and anchor at Paris Island, South Carolina, Thomas Trotter says his Marine uniform is like a second skin. A perfect fit. In fact, he's lost count of the number of deployments he had fighting idiots that call themselves the Taliban. Thomas took a direct hit in the arm from an enemy machine gun round. And after several surgeries, he's back home and ready for his first deer hunt. But first, before camo, comes crowds in Midland, Texas at Terry Johnson's famous show of support military hunt for heroes. first heard of a uh, show of support from my job, pretty much. Um, we got about 120 EOD techs at Camp Lejeune, and Terry hooked them up and sent them out here. So, um, yeah, they, uh, they told me about it. They said it was a good time. From the second we got to the airport, pretty much so they were leave, it's nonstop, like an abundance of attention. It's like overwhelming, it's nuts. It's, uh, none of us are used to this, because you come home in a military town, and the only people that care at all are your families. This thing, called Show of Support, is a community of several hundred thousand people coming together in West Texas to lift the spirits of those who carried the burden of war and who have come face to face with an enemy bent on total destruction of America. It's people and it's way of life. Trotter and two dozen other heroes gathered in Midland and before their hunt were escorted all over for an incredible outpouring of praise. We have a Staff Sergeant, Thomas Trotter, here. He is not a casualty of the AK-47 round that pierced his left tricep, but he will never meet the soldier centuries ago who gave his life so we can learn from him and save Staff Sergeant Thomas Trotter. And generations later, what we learn from you, we will be able to save more lives in the future, and they will never meet you. He is an unsung hero. You guys are, you guys are crazy. But they're just too nice. I don't know, I'm just not used to it. I mean, 
It's just part of the country, though. People are just they're like that. They're just so patriotic, and I've never seen anything like it. Like it's it doesn't even feel like the same country. Because I don't mind like a thank you, but some of the stuff is just like wow. You didn't have to go this far out of your way, you know. That's what they love to do. You know? They love they love their country. That's where I lost it. I was just like, because um, I got a lot of friends that are sitting in the hospital right now that I was just deployed with. And, and they're sitting there with no legs and stuff like that, and their wife and kids are stuck there with them. And, you know, I feel guilty being here with an arm, arm injury. And I know, you know, I know you guys think I deserve it, but I just, I just really hope that they get a chance to come here because they deserve it, you know, just as much, but, but, but way more because they sacrifice more. So and it's, that's hard for, uh, it's hard for people here to understand why. We, we get emotionally upset because a lot of these guys, probably all of them, have friends that have died. So when we're getting all this you know, stuff, but we're still alive, we feel guilty. And then we think about our friends, so we start crying. At the final night before the hunt starts, Thomas Trotter finds himself in an odd predicament, walking on stage in front of thousands. He served as an EOD technician, and he was a former military policeman while he was in the Marine Corps. He was deployed to Iraq in 2004, 2006, and then after that he came back and was part of the 22nd MU, which was deployed to the Middle East in 2009. He also deployed to Haiti uh, for the hurricane relief down there, and then uh, back to Afghanistan in 2011. He was shot by an AK-74 in a firefight in Sangin, Afghanistan. Bullet hit him in a tricep, the bullet departed his forearm, and then hit the rifle, and then back into his arm, causing more damage. Why is it that the bravest of the brave, those who have been showered with gunfire and grenades, seem to always feel most uncomfortable being showered with praise? Thank you for your serve, buddy. Good hunting. It's here where he's presented a brand new rifle and plenty of ammo, his to keep and take home. Hopefully, a few cartridges sharp. Finally, in a West Texas hunting blind, away from the crowds, Thomas Trotter sarched through the myriad of images from so many people wanting to reach out to touch, to take pictures, to make eye contact with an American hero. Yeah, it's awesome. The silence is overwhelming. His guide, Andy Kolb, keeps his eyes peeled for movement in the brush. Little does Thomas Trotter realize he's about to come face to face with the biggest whitetail buck he's ever seen. Nerves go on edge as the safety goes off. Plus the dramatic story of a Marine caught in the open during a fierce firefight. When show of support, Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us. I think the uh, media doesn't really tell all American citizens exactly what's the point of us being there and what exactly we're doing. This is for real. 27-year-old Staff Sergeant Thomas Trotter joined the Marines in 2003, never thinking that the unthinkable could happen to him. When I come back and see the media and, and they talk about how we're not doing anything good out there and stuff and there's no progress, and it's frustrating because uh, I know like there's plenty. His days of combat are over and his rehabilitation for his injuries is being interrupted by the folks in a town in Texas who can't get enough of this tough Marine who spent so much time at the tip of the spear. Um, I expected on this trip to come out to like a small cabin out in the middle of Texas and uh, you know shoot some deer you know, and, get them, and get them out obviously, but that's pretty much it. Early in the morning, it's a week before Thanksgiving here in West Texas. Thomas's hunting guide is Andy Kolb. It's the second day of their hunt, and Andy wants more than anything to be able to locate a nice white tail buck for Thomas. 
You see, Andy's heard the details of the ordeals Thomas Trotter went through on a hot day in June just a few months ago. The day I was injured, it was a normal day, a nice sunny day, nice 120 degree day. And uh, we went out early in the morning. We left, probably stepped off at four in the morning. And our mission was pretty much to engage the people, the local population, and go out and talk to them and ask them um, if they've seen any enemies, ask them if they need anything, wells built or anything. And uh, midday, about noon, we, um, we took a break in uh, one of the last compounds. We rested until we uh, ate some lunch and stuff and you know, hung out for about an hour or two. And then uh, when we were ready to step off, to head back to base, because we were finishing with our mission, the enemy was in an adjacent compound, probably 80 meters away. And when we all stepped out, um, they just opened up on us and with the machine gun, uh, AK-74. They uh, hit me and a buddy, hit me in my uh, tricep right here. I jumped down to a ditch to get cover, and they kept shooting a little bit, and we, we returned fire, and I got a friend to put a tourniquet on me and stopped the bleeding, and uh, we uh, kept suppressing the enemy, and uh, we got back inside the same house we just came from, called for a medevac bird. With no medic in the group, Thomas Trotter spent over an hour hunkered down in excruciating pain. With his arm blown up and losing blood, Thomas helped to mark a landing zone for his own rescue chopper to take him and his buddy out. Finally, Thomas heard the greatest music there is, the staccato rhythm of those chopper blades cutting through the sky. And as the birds were coming down, the Taliban in that, that building we just got shot from, they uh, opened up on the ship with a machine gun fire and uh, two RPGs on the uh, medevac bird, and so he pulled away. He pulled back, you know, so we had to wait for him to come back down. And uh... Hope for survival was fading fast. Thomas's buddy was hurt worse. A machine gun round in the thigh had ripped his femoral artery, and without a medic, certainly a fatal wound. And at this point, the odds were not good for either Marine. The two Cobra pilots uh, went over there and started engaging those guys, uh, shooting at those guys. and. Uh, they were still shooting them, even while the birds were shooting at them, so they were brave. But, uh, and then they kept suppressing, and while they were doing that, the bird landed again real fast. And me and my buddy, um, well, I jumped up and ran. The other guy, he got shot in the leg, so he was getting carried. We ran and jumped on that bird and, and took off as soon as we could. And, uh, and then I just went straight to the hospital and got surgery. So. And he's all right. Like, he, he made it good. He, uh, he's fine. He's out in San Diego now. He's just uh, got out of the hospital so, about three months ago. The flood of bad memories is broken by the first deer to emerge from the West Texas brush on this chilly morning. Thomas faces more surgeries and a rigorous rehabilitation schedule, all because of a twisted group of insane fools that has declared war on all of us. Yeah, it makes you really, really just not have any respect for them at all because they're uh, very, they're very, they're brave, but they're cowards. They killed a lot of my friends, maimed lots of my friends. Lots of my friends lost their legs, lost both legs, you know, arms. You know, they shot me, shot, shot one of my friends in the neck. He's paralyzed for the rest of his life now. So I, I absolutely hate him, you know, but I don't think they're going anywhere. So that's why I proudly support what we're doing, man, because you know, they, need to be, they need to be taken care of, so. One brave Marine pushes back the nightmare and locks in on the first deer of the day as the West Texas landscape comes to life on this November morning. The guide counts 11 points on this buck, and Thomas counts the seconds waiting for a decent shot as the show of support hunt for heroes continues. Stay with us. They're not going to stop attacking us. They got all the money in the world, so you know, America just needs to realize that you can't just be free just by sitting around expecting nobody to mess with you. You got to get out there and let people know that we're not going to be uh, attacked like that. It was only a few months ago that Marine Sergeant Thomas Trotter took a direct hit from an enemy machine gun round. He still carries with him part of that shattered bullet, as well as the memories of that terrible day. But as daylight reveals a West Texas landscape, hunting guide Andy Kolb 
spots more movement from the brush. When I first saw that deer this morning, uh, I got really nervous. I started shaking, you know, trying to hold it in and stuff, but you just get an adrenaline rush and uh, you just keep thinking, like, I don't want to miss it, I don't want to miss it. And... Handy gives Thomas a green light on this buck, but they'll have to wait for just the right shot. It's still early, but it is the last day of the hunt. After two days, Thomas's pulse is racing. I hope I drop it. I hope, you know, I'm hoping I'll nick it or something. And then when you go to put your um, put your eye behind the scope, it is hard because no lie, it is like the same feeling you get when you're shooting at an enemy. It's but, it, but, it, but it's not it's, it's not not as bad. But it's the same gut wrenching feeling you get like like you want to hesitate, but you know you got to. So it's like a it's kind of an emotional thing, but it's like a it's like a stress reliever. So it's kind of nice, but because um, you know you don't you know he's not going to shoot back at you. So, but um, yeah, it's really hard. It's real hard. The wait is excruciating, but finally Thomas has his opportunity. When I uh, hit my deer, I saw him run a couple yards and fall. I was, I was stoked. I was, I was so pumped. I just wanted to scream, but I was, I was worried if I wasn't sure if we were allowed to yet or not, or if there's more deer we went to hit or something. I didn't know, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to freaking holler. You know, I just wanted to shake, uh, shake my guy's hand, shake everybody's hand, high five, and just run out there and grab him. But um, that was, yeah, that was the biggest adrenaline rush ever. It was awesome. Oh yeah. Horns above the grass. That's what we like to see. They're not getting that. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you think? It's the best feeling in the world, and it gives you so much confidence. It's, it's awesome. I never, never killed a deer before in my life, and when I first shot, I thought it was, I thought it was like an average buck around here, or like an average, you know, you know, like a smaller to average one. Yeah, and I, you know, we started getting closer to it. Go around to the front. Just touch his eye. Touch his eye? Yep, touch his eye. Make sure he's... Oh, yeah. He's done? He's done. Yeah. Good beast. Look awesome. Oh, my God, man. Get yeah, your hands man. on him, dude. That rack. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many points is this? Actually, 11. This little guy? Does that count? Yeah, it's over an inch, so it'll count. Oh my god, man. That's nice. Yep. Good hit. Yep. Man! Right where you like them. I'm definitely addicted to hunting now. <laughs> it's my first deer ever. It's insane. And I grabbed it, and it was just so heavy, and the rack was just. Rack was awesome. I was pumped. It was, it was, it was exciting. It was unbelievable. Like, blew me away. So. It was awesome. I just feel like proud as hell. So I just wanted to show it off to everybody. I didn't want, I didn't want them to take it away. I just wanted them to keep it out all night. But uh, yeah, it was, it was an awesome feeling. It was sweet. Hunting guide Andy Kolb grew up out here in West Texas. He's seen hundreds of excited hunters touched by moments like this. But it's this hunt and this hunter that touched him the most. 
It's not often you can watch a day come to life with an American hero. Thomas Trotter is no movie star or famous athlete. He actually did something worthy of admiration. And on his final morning of the hunt for heroes, Thomas Trotter will go home forever touched by a great hunt. This is something I've done all my life. And, and forever touched and by a great man, Terry Johnson. Uh, I think Terry Johnson is one of the greatest Americans we got in this country. He's, um, I know there's a lot of people that uh, support exactly what he does, but for somebody to, to go take the initiative to start this, it's unbelievable, like nowadays especially. Like I didn't know people like him existed at all in this country, and uh, for him to start this for us, it's he has no idea how grateful we are. Every year, it's the hardest thing for Terry Johnson, saying goodbye to another group of heroes after a great hunt. And I see the gratitude, and I see the realization from them that what they did was worth it, because they have seen us who they fought for. They knew they were fighting for America. I show them America. If there's one thing I take from this trip, it's that, um, I'm 10 times prouder to be American, that's for damn sure. To see a guy come in with his deer, see his brother in arms so happy for him, to see the happiness on his face, it's, it's worth more than money. It's, worth, it's awesome, I've done my job. I've done, I've done what I set out to do. I've created a moment in that man's life that is peaceful and calm and where he feels rewarded. And I like being a fly on the wall and watching him and his brothers interact with his success, I guess is what I'm trying to say.